I'm Wes from Recommended Playing, and this guide is going to cover your equipment progression when using a bow through Master Rank in Monster Hunter Rise Sunbreak. If you're playing through the base game, you should use the Defender Weapons and Black Belt Armor to get you through low and high rank and into Sunbreak's content. If you wish to forgo the catch-up mechanics for whatever reason, you should use the base game equipment progression videos on the channel. There will be links in the pinned comment and video description. You should consider starting Master Rank as wiping the slate clean. You'll want to do the standard practice of killing small monsters and carving them, as well as harvesting bugs, mining mining nodes, and harvesting bone piles from Master Rank materials. Monster Hunter is a pack rats game after all. Since you're in Master Rank, you should have access to the full suite of high rank decorations. This makes level 2 sockets on Master Rank gear particularly valuable, as you can socket in whatever skills that you see fit. Level 3 sockets can also fit level 2 decorations, so you can consider 3s as slightly more versatile 2s. For your buddy gear, it really does not matter. Anytime you forge some new weapons or armor for yourself, just use the scraps to outfit your Palamute and Palico buddies. Status weapons are usually my preference, but poison especially feels pretty weak in master rank. Consider status, but just outfit your buddies with easy upgrades. Do not go out of your way for anything buddy related. Just go with the flow. As for talismans, I'll be sticking with a speed eating 2, fire resistance 1, 2 level 2 socket talisman. This is just a convenient way to get whatever skills you're interested in into your gear. If you wish to follow this guide pretty much exactly, you should use any talisman with 2 level 2 sockets. If you have a better talisman, or you have one that you really like, you should make a judgement call and use that instead. Realistically, your talisman doesn't matter too much. Of course, these are merely suggestions. Every Monster Hunter game has gotten progressively easier, and if you want to be a fashion hunter, be my guest. Sunbreak is pretty easy overall. Bow standard core skills will apply. For Bow specifically, you'll want to push very hard for both Stamina Surge and Constitution at maxed out levels. This is because every shot you take with a Bow uses Stamina. Playing without Constitution 5 and Stamina Surge 3 feels quite honestly awful, trust me. Constitution 5 is borderline mandatory to play Bow. Next up is Mighty Bow. Mighty Bow is a skill that's exclusive to Bow and it is only available via the Mighty Bow Feather through the main story of Sunbreak. This is a reward from completing a high rank arena quest. You will not be able to get access to Mighty Bow as a decoration until after you defeat the last boss of the main story in Sunbreak. As a result, you can opt to use the Mighty Bow Feather for the entirety of Master Rank until you get access to the decoration if you wish. For this guide, I'm going to skip it and use Master Rank equipment instead. You should make a judgement call yourself. Next, you'll want to focus on Elemental Bows with Strong Shot Level. Elemental damage is important, but the shot level plays more of a factor in your overall damage. The shot types are Rapid, Spread, and Pierce. Rapid fires a cluster of arrows at a single location. Spread has a shotgun effect where it fires in a flat cone. Pierce fires a single arrow that goes through monsters hitting multiple times. Rapid is the easiest and most consistent bow to use because it forces all your hits to land on a single location. This should preferably be a monster's weak spot. Spread will be your second best option, but has a different playstyle and is generally a little riskier to use. In an ideal scenario, your bows will all have a consistent shot pattern, i.e. rapid, rapid, rapid. This is to get maximum value out of skills like normal up. For defensive skills, you'll want evade window, and you could also consider various levels of evade extender. As a gunner type weapon, you'll take increased damage from monsters. You just have lower base armor than a blade master. One wrong hit and you can be 100 to 0 at endgame, so you have to keep that in mind. You really don't want to get hit when using a bow. Otherwise, after stamina management skills, you'll want attack upgrades. Force shot for rapid type and spread for spread type arrows. Then the standard mix of affinity from critical eye or weakness exploit as well as attack and elemental attack. Now it's time to get started. Your first task to get into Master Rank will be to hunt a Daimyo Hermitar in the urgent quest, Uninvited Guest. Daimyo Hermitar is weak to Thunder, Fire, and Ice in that order. Equip yourself appropriately using your best high rank weapons and armor. You will want to try to break the Daimyo Hermitar's shell for a time-worn Crimson Horn. This also can be obtained by capturing. This isn't a huge deal if you don't get one, but it will give you a little bit of an upgrade immediately. 
Once you've beaten Daimyo Hermitar, you'll have to do a series of tutorial missions. Complete these and you'll get moved to Elgato, your new hub for Master Rank. Before we get into standard game progression, there's one more task to take note of. In Sunbreak, you'll get access to Follower Quests. These give you NPC helpers to assist you during your hunts. These have their own unique progression from the main story. If you ever need to hunt a monster multiple times for equipment, check the follower hunts to see if you can make progress there. Eventually, you will want to complete all of these as there are weapon and armor recipes unlocked from them. Most of these are pretty lackluster and skippable, but for completion's sake, you'll want to complete every quest eventually. Now on to the main story. Starting off in Master Rank 1 Star, you'll need to do two key quests from a list of four. You should start with Royal Ludroth in You Had Me at Poofy. You'll want to forge the Ludroth Mail X and Ludroth Braces X for Stamina Surge and strong level 2 socket options. This is a solid core for getting Stamina Surge and your Constitution levels up. This may take a few hunts, but it will be worth it for your sanity while playing. The Ludroth Mail X also has a level 3 socket which you should use for a Force Shot Jewel 3. Next, you'll want to hunt Kulu Yaku in the key quest, Need a Hunter ASAP. Kulu Greaves are a strong choice here. These have Critical Eye, Stun Resistance, and a level 3 socket. This level 3 socket is a prime spot for a 4-shot Jewel 3. After those two key quests, you'll get the Urgent, but hold off for now, and instead hunt Great Azuchi in the optional quest, Reap What You Saw. You should forge the Azuchi Helm X and Azuchi Coil X to round out your Critical Eye offerings. These also offer some constitution and level 1 sockets which can be filled with elemental attack decorations. After completing the two key quests, you'll get the urgent quest for Tetranodon Blockade to hunt a Tetranodon. Tetranodon is weak to Thunder and Fire. Unfortunately, you'll have to stick it out with your previous high rank bows. Hunt Tetranodon and afterwards you'll still be in Master Rank 1 Star, but you'll get a new set of key quests. This will be standard moving forward, so you don't need to worry too much about it. Tetranodon has some offerings for a bow user, most notably is the Helmet. This contains Normal slash Rapid Up 2. This is valued at 2 level 3 sockets, so it's worth picking this up, even if it takes you a couple of hunts. The next set of key quests is pretty unremarkable in terms of gear. You'll definitely want to complete Burr plus Zzz equals to hunt Lagombi and Great Baggy. Baggy's offerings are underwhelming, but Lagombi has materials for a very strong coil. You should consider forging the Lagombi Coil X. This has strong constitution offerings. You can also consider the Lagombi Van Braces when using an Ice Bow, but otherwise I would consider it skippable. Speaking of Ice Bows, you can finally get a weapon upgrade. You can upgrade your Heaven's Glaze from high rank into a Diamond Dust Bow. This requires supple peels from Zamites in the Frost Islands, as well as a glorious crest from Great Baggy. Try and break its horn during your hunts for it. You'll also need to mine in the Frost Islands for ore. Once you've forged your new bow and potentially some armor, you can move to the next key quests. You should go ahead and hunt Aknasom in It Could Be Worse. This is just to move on to the next urgent quest. Once you've cleared two key quests again, you'll get the urgent quest for Scarlet Tengu in the Shrine Ruins. Blood Orange Bishoten is weakest to water, so you can switch to whatever bow you prefer. Once you've taken out Blood Orange Bishoten, you can finally move on to Master Rank 2 Star. This time, bow is a little different. If you prefer to use a spread bow over rapid, you can consider Keizu's offering. This will be an upgrade while using spread over your high rank Toby Kadachi bow. You can hunt Keizu and the Alabaster Devourer if this looks appealing to you. Keizu is also just an easy monster with bow. He spends a lot of time sitting there zapping and you can just fire arrows into him. You can really dance circles around this guy. Otherwise, the only other monster with decent gear for a bow user is Pookie Pookie. Hunt it now in Poison Drops in the Sand. Pookie Pookie has reasonable constitution offerings as well as some spare shots spattered in there. You can consider building the Pookie Pookie Mail X, the Pookie Pookie Braces X, and the Pookie Pookie Greaves X. These are all worth considering. After completing the two key quests, you'll get a mid-tier urgent to hunt Anjanath in Provoking an Anjanath's Wrath. Once the hunt is complete, you'll unlock a new tier of key quests at Master Rank 2 Star. Anjanath's bow is unfortunately the only fire bow with rapid shots across the board. We will not be using a fire bow in this guide, but you can consider building Anjanath's bow if you really want a fire bow. Afterwards, you'll absolutely want to start with Rumble in the Jungle to hunt Toby Kadachi. 
You can use Toby Kadachi materials to upgrade your Flying Kadachi Striker from high rank into a Flying Kadachi Striker Plus. This is a strong offering and I would recommend it over Keizu's Spread Bow. Rapid is just easier to use in general. Next, Toby Kadachi has some strong armor for your consideration. The main pieces to look at are the Kadachi Helm X, Kadachi Braces X, and Kadachi Greaves X. These will provide Critical Eye and Constitution. The Greaves are by far your best pick up here. Next up, the only monster with an armor consideration is Juratotus. Hunt Juratotus now in a messed up situation. The Juratotus Vambraces X are worthwhile for a level 3 socket to gem in 4 shot, and a level 2 and level 1 socket to do with as you please. Definitely worth building these gloves. Now you'll have to complete the next Urgent, a rocky rampage to fight the first truly new monster, Garangolm. The Golem Braces are not really worth considering, but they are kind of notable for Charge Master and two level 2 sockets. These are more of a novelty hand gear. Might be worth a look at, but otherwise it's time to move on to Master Rank 3 Star. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of offerings at this tier for you as a bow user. You can realistically hunt whatever you want. You can hunt Shogun Sienatar if you wish, it's a new to Sunbreak monster. Nothing really noteworthy for bow except a few pieces that have pierce up. We shan't be using pierce bows, so these aren't overly interesting. Next, you can pick your poison, but Baryoth's offerings are usually strong. Maximum Might will get zero value as a bow user since you're constantly using your stamina. However, the Baryoth Coil X is a decent pickup for Critical Eye 3 with Part Breaker and Critical Draw 1, which you may get some value out of. With those two key quests completed, you'll have to do the Urgent Quest. This is to keep it busy and hunt Aurora Somnicanth. Aurora Somnicanth's gear is alright, but nothing worth going out of your way for at the moment. You can simply complete the Urgent to move to the next tier of quests. And what a tier it is. You will definitely want to hunt Rachna Kadaki and Nargakuga at this tier. Rachna Kadaki has some of the best constitution and stamina surge offerings in the game. You'll want to hunt Rachna Kadaki to forge the Rachna Armguards X and Rachna Greaves X. These two pieces will give you Constitution 5 and Stamina Surge 3. These are very strong options for endgame builds, so you'll want to forge them as soon as possible. Next, you should hunt Narga Kuga once again for two reasons. First, you can upgrade the Flying Kadachi Strike Bow to the Thundering Strike Bow using Narga Kuga materials. You should definitely start with this upgrade. Then, if you wish, Nargakuga's full set is a very strong bow set if you want a simple one-stop shop. You can forge the Nargakuga Helm X, Nargakuga Mail X, Nargakuga Braces X, Nargakuga Coil X, and the Nargakuga Greaves X. This will give you a reasonable balance of Constitution, Evade Window, Evade Extender, and Critical Eye. You can gem in Stamina Surge and you'll be able to get some 4-shot jewels in as well. This does require a rare mantle, but you will get lots of use out of this set. Finally, you need to do one last key quest, so you should just do a Tale of Two Titans to hunt Garangolm and a Somnicanth, because, well, it's easy. After those two key quests, you'll get the urgent quest for Ice Wolf Red Moon to hunt a Lunagaron. Lunagaron's armor is alright, but most notable is the helmet for Critical Eye and Wirebug Master with two level 2 sockets, but it does require a rare gem, so I'm gonna say you skip it for now. What you really should do is upgrade your Diamond Dust Bow into the Frost Moon Crescent Bow. This has lower element than the Diamond Dust Bow's alternative path but gains a massive spike in raw damage, and gains superior rapid shot levels which is very important. You'll want to pick up the Frost Moon Crescent Bow as soon as possible. Once that's completed, you can move on to Master Rank 4 Star quests. Starting off in Master Rank 4 Star, there's one monster that stands out. This is Mizutsune in a Mizutsune's Appeal. You'll want to hunt Mizutsune to pick up the Heaven's Mana Plus Bow. This is going to be your go-to Rapid Water Bow. You can build this outright using Master Rank Mizutsune materials and thanks sweet Georgia Browns because having to work through the Mizutsune tree and hunt all Mother Narwas for materials does not sound appealing at all. 
That's really the only interesting pickup at this tier. You can hunt Diablos, Rathalos, or a Shogun Sienatar with a Rathian. Personally, I'd just go ahead and pick Diablos here. Diablos is super weak to ice, so your new Frostmoon Crescent Bow should give it quite a workout. Once you've completed the two key quests, you'll get an urgent quest for In Search of the Doctor to hunt an Astalos. Astalos's bow would be good, except for the wonky shot patterns and no power coatings. Oh, so it's just really awful then. Astalos' armor, however, is strong for bow, at least the top three pieces are. The Astalos helm, Astalos mail, and Astalos braces are worth considering. You'll be able to get Chain Crit 3, which is strong for increasing your elemental damage and affinity with subsequent shots on a bow. This also has enough level 3 and 4 sockets to fit in 4 shot 3, and Stamina Surge comes innately on the set. This is a strong offering, but the Astalos mail requires a rare mantle, so a compromise set of the helm and braces is still a solid choice. Afterwards, you'll get a new slew of key quests. There's nothing overly interesting at this tier except from Zenogre. The full Zenogre set is worth a look for its weakness exploit and constitution offerings, but I would personally farm Astalos over it. You can consider pieces of this set if you like the look, otherwise you should just move on to the next monster. The only other monster worth a look is Seregios. Seregios is also a new to Sunbreak monster, so embrace that new content. The set has Blade Scale Hone, which can give you increased power on your close range coatings. The helmet specifically has constitution offerings and it's worth a second look. Constitution does come fast and easy in Master Rank thankfully, so you're probably well set with it. After those two key quests you'll get another urgent. This is for a sleeping jungle Espinus. The Espinus has a fire bow that might be worth considering, but we're going to avoid getting one for now. The rest of its set is unremarkable for bow, so just hunt Espinus and move on. The next tier of hub quests has some considerations. I would personally just do Spooky Citadel for Grangolm and Lunageron. This is mostly an opportunity for some additional Lunageron materials, as well as being an easier quest. Next, you'll want to do Dark Wings Dark Work to hunt Gormagala. Gormagala has some armor pieces that you may be interested in, but it also has a decent Dragon Element bow. Fortunately, it's got a kind of wonky shot pattern for right now. After those two key quests, you'll get the urgent for Witness by Moonlight to slay Malzano. In classic flagship monster fashion, Malzano's bow is a reasonable choice here, but it is a pierce bow. This makes it less desirable and safely skippable in my opinion. Rapid and then to a lesser extent spread are just generally the preferred shot types. Malzano does hold the upgrade materials for your Frost Moon Crescent Bow. As soon as you acquire two Bloody Parasites, you should upgrade the Frost Moon Crescent Bow to the Frost Moon Crescent Bow Plus. The damage upgrade is low, but you will get Rapid 4 across the board, which is a strong upgrade. Malzano's equipment is unremarkable for Bow. You'll have better options with other sets. Hunt Malzano once, complete the Urgent, and move on to the next tier of hub quests. Master Rank 5 Star is closing in on the end of the game. You'll want to start off with hunting Rajang. The Rajang pants are usually a decent choice here, and you can absolutely consider building them. However, Bo's reliance on both Stamina Surge and Constitution usually locks down the arm and leg slots to use Rachna Kadaki's armor. You can build the Grand God's Pure Feet if you wish, otherwise you should just simply hunt Rajang and move on. Next, you should hunt Gormagala and Seregios. This is another opportunity for materials to build armor you may have missed out on, or bank the materials for weapon upgrades later. After completing those two key quests, you'll get an urgent for Dark Citadel White Wheel for Shigaru Magala. Just like with Long Swords, you'll have to make a choice here. You can upgrade Gormagala's Entbarung into Entbarung Plus, or you can choose Shigaru Magala's La Revisseur. Personally, I'd pick La Revisseur. Apparently translates to the Proof Raider. This is a spread shot bow and you'll need to change all your four shot jewels to spread jewels. This also requires a modest adjustment in playstyle. You'll need to get up close and personal. 40% affinity is a huge boon in my opinion, and it's preferable to have a single shot type rather than something like Rapid Pierce Rapid. Shigaru Magala's armor is also worth considering. Bloodlust is a strong skill with good synergies with the rest of the set. My preference is just to stick it out with our current offerings and simply move on to greener pastures. Once you've completed Shigaru Magala, you'll have to hunt two of the three classic Elder Dragons, and you should start with Camellios. Camellios has a couple of reasonable pieces, mainly the chest for Evade Window. You can consider this if you wish to get to Evade Window 5, it gets you pretty close on its own. 
You will want to hunt Camellios primarily for upgrade materials for Mizutsune's Heaven's Mana Plus. You can upgrade this now into the Elysian Mana. This is a solid upgrade, but does require a rare Mizutsune material. That being said, this is also a Water Bow, and the next Elder Dragon is Teostra, who is weakest to water. You can either use the new Elysian Mana or the La Revisure to hunt Teostra. Teostra's offerings are usually solid, and it's no exception here. The helmet is a strong pickup for Critical Eye and Critical Boost with level 1 sockets. The chest is usually strong, but Ballistics is not nearly comparable to Master's Touch on Blade Masters. This severely reduces the value of the mail. Stick with what you got. After completing those final two key quests, you'll get the Urgent for Proof of Courage to hunt Big Bad Guys Magorm. Once you've completed the quest, the credits will roll and you'll have finished Monster Hunter World Sunbreak. Your master ranking will become uncapped. Of course, if you want to see everything, there's still a lot of game left to do. You'll be given a new task and a new urgent to slay an afflicted Arzuros. Honestly, this Arzuros may very well be the hardest monster you've fought so far as it's mastered the art of move forward quickly, the hardest move to deal with in all of Monster Hunter. Well, you know, bow's pretty quick. This is still just an Arzuros though, and it should be a relatively painless hunt, he said laughing. This will unlock a new series of quests, the Anomaly quest line. These provide additional materials to push all of your weapons to a final tier. A lot of these upgrades are barely worth anything, we're talking like 10 raw damage and 2 element, but upgrades are upgrades. New tiers of Anomaly quests will become available as you improve your master rank. Let's briefly talk about Guy's Magorn before we move any further. The Abyssal Void has negative affinity, but strong raw and decent dragon element. Unfortunately, it has a very awkward shot pattern of rapid pierce spread rapid, making it impossible to get full value of normal up. Unfortunately, this is a skip. Armor-wise, there's some juicy pieces to sink your teeth into. First up, the Archfiend Armor Ura. The Waste has Weakness Exploit 1 and Chain Crit 2 with a level 4 socket. This level 4 socket is valuable because after Guy's Magorm, you will get access to the Mighty Bow Jewel. This isn't required for Le Revisseur, but most of your other bows will require Mighty Bow. Next up, the Archfiend Armor Ballo, the chest armor, also has Weakness Exploit and Chain Crit 1 with a level 3 and a level 2 socket. These are good options for Force Shot or Spread Shot with Weakness Exploit and Chain Crit, and it makes it a very strong option for bow. The arms and legs have Guy's Magorm's unique skill, Dereliction. Dereliction increases your elemental and status values when you're using the red scroll, and when you swap scrolls, you can recover health. I have quite literally and will never use skill switching in Sunbreak, so your mileage is going to vary. Bow needs Constitution and Stamina Surge, and these are easily acquired at maximum level with the Ragnikadaki arms and legs. Pick up the Guy's Magorm Waist and Chest, and then use the Teostra Helm and Rachna arms and legs, and you're golden. Stay gold, Pony Boy. This is a good set, but generally these large monsters just aren't that fun to fight. You're going to have to stick it out though. Then you can do whatever quest you see fit to reach Master Rank 20 for the next Urgent. You can farm for whatever you see fit here. The follower quests are a good option to progress those for new recipes. Alternatively, continue to farm the endgame dragons or just wantonly slaughter easy monsters to raise your Master Rank. Once you reach Master Rank 20, you'll have to fight Wind Serpent Ibushi in the Urgent Quest, Retribution. Most of Wind Serpent Ibushi's offerings are underwhelming just like in High Rank. Kinda don't even want to talk about it. The bow is mildly interesting, but we'll talk about that a little later. The next urgent is at Master Rank 30. You may want to see the new tier of Anomaly quests, or just continue doing whatever you feel like. At Master Rank 30, you'll get the urgent for Spine Tingling Divinity Reprise. This is to slay the Master Rank version of All Mother Narwa. Great. Just like Ibushi, Narwa's weapons and armor are very underwhelming. These are big skips. Now you'll get a new tier of Anomaly quests to take a gander at. Otherwise, just get to Master Rank 50. At Master Rank 50, you'll get the Urgent for Pierce the Heavens. This is for Furious Rajang, a slightly more aggressive Rajang with a slightly altered moveset. Furious Rajang has a unique upgrade path compared to Rajang for weapons. The Archbeast Avatar is a strong spread bow with Thunder Element and huge raw damage. You can consider building this if you like to use spread bows. Rajang Apoplexy are used for upgrading La Revisure into Linocence, or The Innocence if you're not from Get back! This requires two Rajang Epiplexy and a Shigaru Megala Mantle. Lots of rare materials here, but upgrades are upgrades. Furious Rajang is a few armor pieces for your consideration. A few pieces have a unique skill aptly named Furious. You build Rage in Red Scroll, and then you swap to Blue Scroll for temporary unlimited stamina and some status bonuses. Personally, I do not skill swap, but unlimited stamina is huge for bow. That being said, I think you're better off with your current set over farming Furious Rajang for minor side grades. 
The next Urgent is at Master Rank 70. You'll get the Urgent for Crimson Glow Valstrax, our friendly neighborhood Rocket Dragon. The armor is exactly like in high rank. I personally don't think this is worth building, and it's definitely only worth using when you're using a raw or dragon weapon. I prefer general purpose sets, and I don't necessarily like using equipment with specific activation or criteria. Your mileage is going to vary. Crimson Glow Valstrax's bow, the Crimson Plume, has an awkward shot pattern of Pierce Spread Spread. Personally, I think the Innocence is a nicer spread bow. At Master Rank 100, you can finally fight Scorned Magnamallow. The Male Piercer is a Pierce into Spread Bow with Blast. I guess you could consider this a kind of catch-all general purpose bow, but you would definitely prefer elemental bows of each type. The armor is fine, but it has more skill swapping nonsense and activation criteria skills. I'm personally not overly interested in that, and by the time you've made it to Scorn Magnum Allo, well, you should know what you want and what's good for bow. This is going to be the catch-all section. You should upgrade your elemental bows to the final tiers via the Affliction quest to prep for whatever comes next. You want to upgrade the Toby Kadachi Thunder Bow, the Luna Garon Ice Bow, and Mizutsune's Water Bow, which just leaves a Fire Bow. If you want a Fire Bow, which we skipped over, you have a few options. For Pure Rapid, you want to pick up Anjanath's Lowen Bogan Plus. This has strong raw and decent fire, but it does have minus 20% affinity, which does hurt. Otherwise, you have to pick a bow with an awkward shot pattern. Espinus is rapid, pierce, rapid, rapid, probably making it the best choice overall. Finally, Rathalos has rapid, rapid, spread, spread. These are all pretty awkward. If you're into high affinity fire piercing bows, which is probably good against absolutely nothing in the game, you can look at Ragnikadaki's Creeping Darkness. If only it had a better shot pattern. If you want a Rapid Dragon Bow, unfortunately your best option is Wind Serpent Ibushi's Sky Riven Nightfall. This has Pierce Pierce Rapid Rapid. Generally you want to be at level 3 to 4 charge as much as possible, so this is your choice for a Rapid Dragon Bow. That's equipment progression for bow covered. At this point you should be well equipped to handle whatever extra content appears after Master Rank 100, and in future content updates, you should know what good gear looks like moving forwards. Thanks for watching. If you had a good time, you can subscribe for more extremely detailed guides like this one. Likes and comments always help. If you want to support the channel, you can use Super Chat during live streams or use Super Thanks on this or any one of my videos. I'm not picky. Becoming a channel member is also a great option. Hey, you could even subscribe to YouTube Premium. This gives you ad-free viewing on all of YouTube and every channel you watch gets a little slice of that pie. The Patreon will be back live on August 1st. You can pledge and support the channel at patreon.com slash recommendedplaying. See you next time for Hunting Horn Equipment Progression.